Hey there everybody, it's Chaos back again. Um, I know I haven't posted about the uh, build that I was working on for a while now, the two-hander build. The reason for it is because I am constantly changing little things. Um, I found a combination of skills that work a little bit better, uh, playing in part with another person from Reddit. And um, this other barbarian that I played with actually uses two-handers for the entirety of his barb career. So um, we gone ahead and ventured out, uh, changed a few things around. And this one change has actually made my build, I would say, a lot less fury hungry or starved. And I just want to go ahead and bring that to you guys today since we're um, right now it's about 3 10 a.m. There's a scheduled maintenance at about 5, so that'll give me some time to uh, edit some video. So, without dragging on, um, what I changed from my last build, if you guys haven't seen the video yet, I'll try to post a link up in an annotation. Um, is the spear skill and I've gone from dread spear which basically gave you um, a 60% life gain on you know any damage that you do with it to harpoon and what harpoon does and I've talked about this in the last video you might not need it however we found out a combo that actually worked pretty well is you can pierce multiple enemies in a straight line and drag them back for 185% weapon damage now the damage alone is pretty good because this is 100% pierce um, this is not a chance to, it's none of that. It, if you shoot it, you know, it will go maximum distance, it will pierce whoever it can, all for a huge amount of damage, and then drag them all to you. So, that's a huge thing because we, well, I personally win with Rend. Um, the person I play with actually didn't like Rend too much. And I know, um, you know, the forums right now, all the rave is about Rend. Rend is pretty nice. Um, I've commented before of how good it is in some utility um, settings. But because of the fact that I took out my heal from here, um, Rend is picking that up right now. Um, my gear, it's still a little less than optimal. I don't have any life steal on my weapon. I'm still looking hard for the perfect two-hander for my build. Um, unfortunately, I'm sticking with my um, my scorn at the moment. So the 9% life gain from this is obvious. I mean, if you're dragging people in, my 185% weapon damage right now one shots things in solo games so there's not much of a chance for me to combo this up but there are a few times where you don't crit with this um, when you don't basically you could rend them to death and keep yourself safe while doing it and that's a really, uh, really good combo I've changed ignore pain to ignorance is bliss as well for the times when you know bloodlust isn't giving me enough heals because I'm fighting a single target um, ignore pain basically resets the fight for me so I gone from the seven second rune to ignorance is bliss, um, and I took out stomp for Ren. And stomp, honestly, it was a generator. It was there because I was getting fury starved, and the control of white mobs is not so important since I one hit things with this build. So Ren made a better obvious choice, and um, Ren is also good because I found out one other little thing about it too. If you're fighting occultist. Um, I mean occultists, um, however you guys like to pronounce it. Um, basically this particular spell here will ignore your shield spell. So you can cast Ren and if you're critting with Ren, every cr um, hit with Ren will crit. And I'm critting at 100k right now where normal hits are about 20. Um, you could basically kill them with just ticks alone. So 100k worth of ticks, um, you know, for an occultist when they are basically shielded that's a huge huge difference there um, you no longer have to worry about you know using seismic slam and getting blocked off by that shielding rend um, I just harpoon the whole entire mob rend them and in about like you know five seconds they're dead um, I kept leap kept impunity however I changed my um, settings for the passive skills I put in no escape and this is where the combo is good the reason why I could get rid of Stomp for the Fury Gen is because of this. And of course, you guys have probably known this if you play Range Barb at any time. I did at one time as well, except for I didn't have the high enough crit to make this work. Um, so you see here, if you're using Ancient Spear, there's 10% um, increase in damage, of course. So you're now at 195. So if you guys aren't familiar with the number, that's exactly what charge gets you. And charge basically is the same thing, except for you're putting yourself in danger. So here's the big key with this is Ancient Spear is now a viable AoE for you as well as Seismic Slam. Difference this is Ancient Spear is a generator. And the other bonus to this is a critical hit with Ancient Spear resets to cooldown. And that is just like Merciless Charge except for you're guaranteed 100% cooldown on a single crit. That's huge because you got to remember Harpoon pierces enemies. 
So just like charge, you line yourself up the same way. If you're hitting four to five enemies at a time, which in Act 3 is super easy to do, um, you are almost guaranteed a crit if you have high enough crit gear. So my build right now is now revolving around more crit chance than anything else. Although, you know, DPS is king. Um, this build is fun because for me, I like building big damage. I like seeing big damage numbers. Um, and all these skills here basically work in unisons to keep you alive and also do massive AoE damage as well as single target um, because of the fact that, you know, everything here hurts. It just hurts everything at once if you want it to. Um, so gear-wise, I am at ridiculous levels and I, I tend to not make as many videos now because my gear is to a point where I don't want my videos to be more um, item showcases but rather um, I want them to still be informative. Now I did spend a little money recently and uh, the reason for it is because I got one of these guys here. I was um, already well on my way to getting a full set so I figured what the heck I mean my armor uh, it wasn't the best armor out there but it was adequate so instead I snipe this guy for 65 mil um, it was a pretty decent deal and easily I could probably resell this at the same price later on so I'm pretty safe with it three socket with the high strength roll um, the cold resist is a wasted random roll but honestly speaking I could care less because I like the high armor on this one as well um, I had this which I found of course and the belt which my friend gave me now I just ran an inner pants the run before I'm making this video so I've just, um, in combination with these mediocre boots here that I found as well, um, are at 24% run speed. This is a huge, huge bonus for a lot of people out there. I was actually, of course, looking for either Tyrael's Might, which will lose me about 300 armor, and a whole bunch of other things which I'm not happy about, and or a replacement with um, Lacuni Prowlers. Lacunis are a very expensive venture right now, and they will get me DPS-wise. Um, my old pants, in fact, were these guys here, and the irony of it is because even though I lose all of that strength, we're looking at 183 strength, um, the 9% attack speed overrides it. In fact, I actually lose 298 if I go back to my old pair, and since my old pair didn't have resistances, even though these are, you know, monk pants, um, and I actually found this a little while ago too, which makes a nice set for my monk if I play it again, um, but you know the movement speed is great the increase in crit is great um, the extra gold wasted roll don't really care about that um, attack speed that's the big thing about this is when you're using a two-hander attack speed is key because once you're in swing animation you're very vulnerable and right now even though I have a weapon that gives me a 1.0 attack speed I'm at 1.25 so I'm getting a 25 percent bonus is kinda of like a permanent frenzy along with the rest of my gear I'm just gonna quickly scroll through the rest of my gear um, so you guys could take a look at it in the video. I'll probably make a snapshot when maintenance is up. So um, right after I'm done with this, I'm gonna go take us into the game, and I'm gonna go do a few laps in in some of the I would say core areas of the game in Act Three, just to show you how this build has evolved. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off, and let's go Area Crater One really quick. So generally what I like to do is of course you always save war part. that's the number one thing. And as you can see this combo here, when you get a pack of these things, you can build basically about a full fury bar just doing that. Now of course my crit chance, if you guys didn't see earlier, it's going to be hanging around 46% right now. And this is with 10% from Weapon Master, 5% from your default. So I'm at 31%, you know, the 1% from this guy here brings me over the top. 30 is not hard to obtain. Of course the hard part to obtain is going to be the crit damage. I find, however, um, the minimal to devastate Act 3, and what I mean is just not to progress with it, but literally to do what I'm doing at a slower pace. Um, you're looking at 7,000 armor, 700 resist. That puts you at a comfortable point with 30,000 HP. Um, maybe 35 will be a comfort zone for some of you guys, but I'm pretty well off um, You know, with the practice in this build now. I don't need that much. You could get by with that and 50,000 DPS. Um, I ran with 50,000 DPS, roughly you're translating that to maybe about 100, 200k a crit. I'm double that right now, so it just means that you know for every one hit that I do, you have to do two. But one to 200k, you're still one-shotting most things in this game. So what I'm doing is overkill for these guys, but it helps a lot for mob fights. Um, and my rend is so powerful to the point where I don't really need much of anything else to survive. And blow the Maltors. 
um, I have ignore pain. Usually, I would save ignore pain for when I'm trapped with walls and whatnot because that resets the fight no matter how, um, you know, how bad the fight is. And uh, if you notice Plague too, what I like to do is because I have Superstition, Superstition's a staple in most of my builds, I would just stand in Plague to get some of the stuff, uh, the Fury back. As you can see there, um, got a load of wars on me. It's a little harder for me to play when I'm commentating, but it's still not too bad. Um, bloated Maltrors, they've been nerfed to the ground. So generally speaking, if you have a Barb nowadays, you notice that you know they're relatively safe to fight. Now the speed pants that I've just got, it lowered my armor, or not my armor, my hit points by about 7k. Um, so this is just really a test to see if 24% attack speed is worth, or walk speed is worth it. Um, so far I, I kind of like it, just purely for the fact that, you know, I get around quicker. Um, of course when I'm playing this, um, I am a little slower, a lot slower than a lot of whirlwinders out there. Purely for the fact of the walk speed. I can tell you right now that my kill speed probably trumps them quite a bit. I could get through a mob basically by about two seismic slams and a rend. And that's in a matter of, you know, like about five seconds for most of my fights. Um, for the ones that give me trouble, they're mostly going to be um, like phase beast with, uh, with reflect damage. No sounds weird as a barb to have reflect damage as one thing that you know bothers you, but it's one of those things where right now my weapon once again is not the most optimal. Um, so when I do get one with life steal on it, it's going to be a little bit easier. As you can see there, when you have dread spear with the harpoon um, and you're critting with no escape, you actually will get quite a bit of those crits if you're high enough to crit. And this is where Ren will save you every time. Face Beast. Always gonna be a pain. Um, when I get my weapon, it's gonna basically be about 5% life steal. That's what I'm aiming for. 300 strength. Uh, 100 crit with a socket would do me. Um, I've seen one on the auction house a little while back. I should have put money on it. It was 84 million dollars. Um, it actually came with like about 200 something bit along with 300 something strength. It was only 1100 DPS, but it had like 5 point something life steal as well. That would have put me over the top. Um, and I probably would be done with this build and I would be happy to play this way until something else comes up. Um, now what I'm hoping for the next patch that Blizzard has in mind, you know, outside of PvP is maybe an arena mode. And what I mean by that is a mode where, you know, travel distance becomes nullified. Because right now, everything that you're striving for has to do with travel distance. Travel distance is what makes a build efficient. And I think that's purely going to be something where it, it takes away from the combat aspect of the game. Um, I purely build myself to take care of things as quickly as possible. Um, that's what I aim to do with my barb. So for those of you that play the same way as I do, then that's where my videos are kind of going toward. You know, there are guides for... If you want to play the same style that I'm playing, and that's rather unfortunate, I got stuck there. Yeah, so basically with this build here, as you can see, there's very little that could give you trouble um, outside of reflect damage or some ridiculous mob defenses. But yeah, that's a couple of levels here. I'm just gonna run through as fast as I can with these. And generally speaking, it's a little easier to play without commentary once again, but I, I think I'm doing okay for the meantime. I popped Ignore Pain there earlier than I normally would if I wasn't playing, just to make sure I didn't die. Ignore Pain now is usually going to be um, long enough at 5 seconds with this kind of a DPS to kill things, so it's relatively, relatively safe for me to pop it in just about most situations there. But if you were running with 50k DPS, you know, it becomes a little hairy. But then again, every build's going to have a little bit of a limit. Um, even Whirlwind. And right now, the mobs that, of course, people have the most trouble with, with this build, becomes the, the easiest. We're talking Impalers. We're talking the uh, Occultists or Occultists. Um, they basically are, are nullified as far as their distance advantage because Dread Spear pulls them all in. And by pulling them all in, it sets them up for one of these. I'm just going to show you here with this mob. Yeah, let's 
sets him up for one of these. And you can continue doing that to gain more fury if you're so inclined. And that's a very good combo. I, I like it. And the fun factor of aiming the spear when you can grab like about five, six mobs, it's amazing fun. Um, if you guys haven't tried Dread Spear yet, it's one of my new favorite skills of all time. I'm probably going to start incorporating it into more and more builds as I go. Um, when I am get done with two hand, which I don't think it's going to be anytime soon since I do have a pretty, you know, good build going right here. I'll probably venture out into other things as well. Maybe go back to a do hand uh, or dual wheel two hand build or something like that. Um, it just depends on the mood because right now until the next patch comes out with something better, this is the aim of what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to get through Tower of the Dam 2 really quick here. Just to find maybe one shooter mob of some sort with distance. Um, suck you by once again are those mobs where they used to give you trouble, but now what I do is I just backtrack and they will follow me. And once they follw me, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and you know throw a spear in there. Oh here we go. So I'll just backtrack. Now there's still a problematic thing with Succubi because they have this animation where they will go ahead and you know backpedal and get away from you. Um, so sometimes you do have to put yourself at risk just to lay down the uh, the rend on them. But once you get the rend on them, you can let the rend basically do its thing and kill everything. So that was a sucky by mob. Um, like I said, I mean, you know, Whirlwind is still going to be the faster of the two builds, but I like the kill speed here. That's what I want to do. Just, you know, I know eventually we might get some random dungeons of some sort, hopefully. Um, if they're planning more than just PvP, or maybe an arena style like Jar of Souls, but you know, randomly just spawn things. I think with the power of this build in a stationary sense, um, you could look to basically, you know, overpower quite a bit of things. And if that game mode were to be reality, I, I think two handers are going to be a little bit more popular. That's the other thing, too, right now, if you're looking on the auction house, um, Two-handers are not expensive, they're in fact relatively cheap. And by having that advantage is you're no longer in competition with Whirlwind Barbs for good weapons, and you can relatively build up your DPS quite easily. I have people that told me, um, you know, well, your build has this and has that, and honestly speaking, um, I'm finding a lot of these things. I've counted today how many legendaries that I've gotten. I've probably put about 50 hours in. Um, as you can see, I'm Paragon 24, about to hit 25. And in my 50 hours, I found about 9 legendaries and sets without any magic find outside of, um... Because I play a lot of multiplayer games outside of my Enchantress, but my Enchantress does not get to enjoy a lot of these runs with me when I'm playing with my friends. So, um, between a lot of us, we, you know, found over 20, actually, legendaries. I, I lost count because we, we found quite a bit. Of course, the Scorn Beam, one of them, the IK Belt that I'm wearing is one of them. Um, that I haven't found personally, but I've found nine by myself. So the drop rates, I know a lot of people are still complaining. They might not have 50 hours in a given month to even play this game, but you know, that's Diablo for you. You kind of have to put in the time if you want to go ahead and progress with better gear. And if they were to up the drop rates even more, I would find myself just finding way too many things and I personally would have nothing to look forward to. Um, when I play, I kind of play for efficiency, like everybody else. And hopefully this run here... Oh, that's not good. I just used my leap in a bad time. You want to save all your cooldowns for these guys. One thing about the spear, too, is that uh, it is a it is an interrupt. So you can go ahead and interrupt whatever mob that it is you're fighting, even champ packs, um, I don't know champ packs are the yellow ones or the elites, but the yellow packs that you run into, um, they tend to, you know, get interrupted even with this particular skill, so if they generally do some odd things, you could reposition them out of a full surround because, you know, I don't have the comfort of charge right now, um, but so far in my experience, I don't need it. So, if you're fighting something relatively difficult, um, Spear actually does a few things for you. I like the utility of it. And I know in my last videos, I've downed, you know, skills like Seismic Slam and, um, Rend. And, you know, how they could be buffed a little bit in some aspects and they're not too viable. I mean, I would say I take it back in a, in a small degree, but I still think that they could be better still. 
Um, currently speaking, I think Ren's damage is to a point where it's borderline ridiculous um, with the two-hander because prior to this, I was looking at the numbers, never noticed that they crit. Of course, you know, many people have told me that they did. Um, and when they do crit, it's just ridiculous. Like, that mob right there is getting 100k, basically, per tick on the Ren. And I didn't even really have to do anything but to walk over them to kill them. So Ren's DPS right now is just kind of insane. Um, and couple that with uh, the effect of bypassing the occultist shield, um, that's huge. And for those of you that used it but didn't know that little fact, it's huge. So if you're chasing him even with a full melee build, it's worth every penny to have it on your skill bar just for that reason alone. Of course, if that mob wasn't in the game, I mean, you know, if I have enough life steal, I'll probably put another skill like charge back in there. I'd rather have merciless charge just for the endless fury. I think the combo's better, and with enough life steal, I don't have to worry about anything else, you know, as far as uh, fury starvation or heals. Because with about 8%, uh, I'm gonna be in a good spot. Oh, forgot to. Um, yeah, I forgot the bloodlust there. Um, so generally speaking, I'm gonna probably run or end the run here because you know taking death there um, If you guys have any questions shoot me a line um, I was about to do the minimal gear challenge The only thing what it is is I don't want to shell out money for inferior gear in which I have no space for already This is my backup gear slots um, This is my random stuff that I find on my runs ready to sell slots And these are you know my blue set that you guys seen in my other videos I keep this just for momental sake. I, I like it um, for what I've done with it. 140k, you know, ran through Act 3. It's pretty amazing. Keeping stuff like this, which is a pretty good uh, blue, which I've accidentally picked up. As you know, I don't pick up blues. And uh, my magic find set for my wizard. Got quite a few things here, um, just random stuff. So I really, one, didn't want to spend the money, and two, didn't have the space for it. I've got nine meals all full to the brim. Um, but generally speaking, this build here, see, I don't even have what I would like on my build as far as resistances and armor. Purely because, like, you know, like I said, I didn't run with this little hit points before. I ran with uh, about 4k more, actually, so not too much more, but 3,700. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. I honestly feel this is enough and I have the Enchantress here of course if I wasn't running with the Enchantress I'd probably switch back but um, this is this is currently buff right now and I'm under 700 under 7000 but if you reach that goal and you have 30k life 50k damage is enough if your weapon has about 5% life steal because you'll be more than double mine if you basically you only have a belt with three right now so if you have about five to six you have double my heals and you will need half my DPS to do the same amount of su sustainability or survivability um, and you should be comfortably walking this of course gear wise you want to aim for about 30% gear um, throughout this set and once again prioritize crit hit chance versus damage because damage you could get on a single weapon if you get 100% with a socket that's 200 right there um, my damage is what puts me at 90k, so of course if you get a Scorn, more power to you if you can't. Um, rares are still the best, I'm still looking for mine. Um, yeah, that's basically it, and in about an hour and a half here, that was what, a 20 minute romp uh, through Area Crater. In about two hours here, I'm going to go ahead and edit the video, so hopefully I'll see you guys again. If you guys have any suggestion of what you might want to see with this build, if you're semi-interested, let me know. Um, I'll go and try what I can to help as many people out as you know that I don't ask for subscribers or anything like that Don't make money off of these videos. This is just you know a pure hobby for me So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Take care. Bye. Bye